finding peace and the indifferent, okay, and learning how to become the most empowered creator you can be, moment to moment to moment to moment to moment, from your own heart, okay. So it's like in sessions for me with people, the the idea of a session is not to um, make people reliant upon an outside source to continue on with their life. The idea of the session is to empower people to tap into their own heart and their own truth, right? And that's what most most I'm doing is just looking at the variables, listening to the heart, helping them work through things, and sort of offering clarity as to where they are right now through their own heart and their own feelings by how it, I can feel into people's energy, right? And that's all happening right now. We know with quantum physics, quantum theory, that it's all energetic and it's all, you know, possible. It's really, really possible. We have a life force energy field, so I think Ella, LFE is what they're calling it, or LES, I'm not sure, grateful. Um, and now we're identifying that, right? That it is all energetic. So when, when we're tapping into our own hearts and we're learning how to become really empowered creators, let's know that over the course of history, we've been more tapped, a little bit more tapped into fear. Like I was saying, where, where you're at today. We've been a little bit more tapped into fear and that that does differentiate and shift from moment to moment to moment sometimes, okay? can be in love most all the time and then go through it a little bit. And like I tell people, it's easier the more you practice, you know? Like just think of mowing the lawn. The more times you mow the, the same row, the more that path is imprinted, okay? So through history, we've been, we've been heavy in fear, okay? Um, so it's become like more real almost than love. And that's the hallucination has become so real. We have less than. We're reading, you know, we're getting effed by someone, and la la. la. <laughs> the story of perpetuation goes on, and the fact of the matter is, it's all perfect. It's all love. If we stop and we really start to honor and anchor ourselves in things like quantum physics, the, the proof is there. We're thinking and we're creating on a molecular level based on thoughts, feelings, actions. The proof is in the scientific data that Satan shows that we are healing people when we collectively come together through our prayer. That we are changing people's lives by opening up our hearts. We can no longer deny that fact that this is happening, right? And that's our truth. This is the truth. And I want everybody to hear this and just take it as it fits. We have the resources. The resources are not the problem. We have enough resources, right? How we're, it's how we're handling it, it's how we're expediting it, it's our complete waste and lack in some cases, and total, total deprivation in others. So like in one hand there's the gluttony, and in the other hand it's like the complete opposite end of that spectrum. And so for us to acknowledge we're on one planet, right, one world, one planet, all individual but all connected, we can work together as empowered artists, right, harnessing these these scientifically driven, right, facts to what they can be because it's always proven and, and, you know, ongoing, right? Thankful, and I'm glad about that. I always say if I ever stop learning, what will I do? And I love the idea that you can spend, like, a 100 years just studying the one essence of an oak tree, you know, or one species of an oak tree, you know, or whatever of a, of a, you know, a tree family. And and still not know everything. Um, so learning and empowering ourselves as artists, right, is what it's about, coming together and honoring the fact that this is happening. We are creating. The law of attraction came on the scene really, really gratefully and sort of woke people up to that aspect as well, like, hey, like, what's the secret? Then it was like, oh, okay, good. If I, if I put this out there, I'm going to get this back. I'm going to make a vision board and, you know, do all these other, you know, attracting things. And that's, that's perfect. And then I think um, Art of Love comes and goes one step beyond that, or what we could call the Art of Embodiment, which is where I say God needs to be the change. And this is the power here. This is the power part, okay? Open eyes, ears, and hearts. Everybody take a deep breath with me. In through the nose, bringing it down. Dropping down into the diaphragm, like expanding there. Take another deep breath. Close your eyes if you're in a safe place and you can. 
holding the breath, holding the breath, and then exhale through the mouth, pushing everything that's heavy out. One more inhale through the nose, into the belly, and then exhale through the mouth. Grateful to open up eyes, ears, and heart, and remember that we are being the change that we wish to see in the world, right? And that's where, again, I was saying these scientific, you know, aspects come in where we're, we're, we're seeing that that's literal. It's a literal statement in, in like the book Frequency and Flow, or is it Force and Flow? I believe it's Frequency and Flow that states, and I'll get my facts straight for y'all and put up a, um, like a, a follower to this so that you guys can actually find the sources that I speak of, because <laughs> I just offhand stuff. It's just been floating around in my, bi my body for so long, but anyways, grateful. Um, I do have the references saved um, on my, on my my computer in some space, um, so I'll make that available. However, so it's like they're saying, with, when you have a person who's, whose vibrational frequency is embodying at like a really high level, okay, so like let's say at the level of we're embodying and we're, at, we're, we're actualizing peace, things like peace, things like love, gratitude, kindness, etc. and that vibration is, ro is at, at the frequency, let's say like a 600, and that is going outward and it's affecting the world. On a mass level, it's raising the vibration of the world. It's making things easier because we're coming now into a vibrational flow of what's greater than us, of what's beyond us, right, if you will. Um, and so this can seem a little bit deep, but that's what we're ready for, friends, I believe, in my heart and evolution aspect, is this is when mankind honors the fact that we're love and that we've got more power than we ever thought possible that all these religious stories and past and systems come to, to remind us of that message, right? So that's why Art of Love, Art of Embodiment is not about being right or wrong or um, doing things a certain way to have everything you want. It's about learning how to roll with the punches, be an embodied artist, follow your heart, and get what's really good for your soul, right? It's all about food for the soul here. And so if, you're, if, you, if you really trust and we believe in that, right, that if we're being the change or if we're in the art of embodiment, that we're actually we're embodying the vibrational frequency of all of those things. Okay? So instead of attracting something into our life, instead of I'm now attracting my partner, and that goes away from the idea that a soulmate or your twin flame heart always lives within you. You're always together. You were never really apart. Um, and it's it's you know it's deeper than that. Um, so that being said, you know, as it's in wow, et cetera, you're not attracting, so it looks thankful that they say, again, as within, so without. Like that concept, okay? So whatever your, your, is going on internally, then on the external is what you're receiving sort of the image of, okay, or the experience of in your life um, to some level or another, at least the way that you perceive it, okay? Because you could see any event, I could see, I could see like an owl flying in the backyard and, and tell myself a story that now doomsday is upon me <laughs> and I need to run and hide under my couch and wait for at least 10 hours surrounded by a circle of salt. Or I could tell myself that that is, it means absolutely nothing or infected with owls in the area. It's the worst day of my life ever. Or it could just mean nothing I carry on. Or I could put the meaning to it and it's not something and honor the lineage that for thousands of years has been considered a totem in earth medicine. And that and one of those decisions will bring us into what I call a, our vibrational frequency or alignment with, with our heart. Okay, so are we honoring, and I hope so, because I'll just get going and going and going and talking about all these great things, which I love so much. Um, and thank you guys for being here, too, FYI, because you're beautiful. And I feel your energy. I feel your light. Literally and figuratively. Okay, so we're talking about everything is love. What does that mean? Love affects us on a physical level. Let's talk about that. I'm going to go back to the book and read a little bit about that. Okay, choosing love affects you on a physical level. When the feeling of love is surging through our system, it can boost our immune system, create feelings of happiness, joy, and so forth. The chemicals begin surging through our body, actually creating more of its positive feeling, just by our feeling it to begin with. 
Have you ever noticed when you're in love with someone, you spill your perfume? No big deal. You stub your toe, it hurts, but whatever. Your eyes gloss off in your day, and you daydream about man cake. Number one, why you hold the ice upon. No matter what is happening when you are in love, the feelings you have about life in general can become more relaxed and calm. On a physiological level, these brain chemicals reduce blood pressure, improve circulation, improve weight control, etc. Love actually affects and changes us on a physical level. Can you begin to see why it is so important that we continue to choose love and positive thoughts, not from sources outside of ourselves, but on an internal level? and that it does have an effect on us in our lives and our well-being. The more that you engage in the communication with your heart, the more in alignment you become as a creator. The more you embody love, the more loving conditions show up within your body and without in your life. Yay, I love that. So that is actually talking about how love affects us on a physical level, okay? So kind of going through the, the role list, if you will, so far, okay? We've sort of engaged in what the art of love is, okay, an art class, class designed to help you fine tune your skills as a creator and honor who you are as an artist and find out what the heck that means, you know. Like going to culinary school, maybe I'm a pastry chef and I have to figure that out, you know, and then how do I then express as that, right? Um, and then we've kind of tapped into what is art of embodiment, okay, kind of the next sort of steps, if you will, and like love and attraction, um, where we no longer are creating a separation point from ourselves and everything else in the world. Now we're honoring that we're embodying the vibration of that. And that means having emotional responses um, and our emotional landscape embodying and matching what we want to see, et cetera, and that's what we're going to work on. And that's what we're going to talk about and tap into, right? So then you now we know these concepts, and we have to get in deeper and, and really figure that out. So then we, we've we learned that, and then we've started to learn and define the fact that everything is love. Fear or love is happening, one or the other, right? We're always choosing. That those choices do affect us internally and externally. And now that we know that love also affects us on a physical level, okay? Um, that when we think loving thoughts, and we feel loving things that actually our literal physical temple is positively affected. So let's take that to anyone battling any type of health, disease, or illness and work towards wellness. And remember that it's only over when we give up and that it stops in our mind and it starts in our mind and it's what we feed. So there's like a Native American saying, I guess, that's like, you know, there's a, a dark and a light wolf within us, and which one, whatever one is lit, lives or thrives is whatever one we feed, right? So if we want to feed wellness within our bodies, we know that we know that by choosing these, these empowered positive thoughts, our body naturally starts to become more well and more whole. That's just it's an automatic thing that's not starting to happen. We don't even have, it doesn't even require thought on our part, right? The more we know, the more we become empowered, the more we choose these stimulating positive thoughts, okay? And then kind of going to the next aspect of, of what's the, in, within the Art of Love book, and again, it took me a lot of years to bring this through, and it's perfect now because I've, excuse me, like I said, I'm a little short of breath today, which is better than some, without any color of love, <laughs> um, thankful, is... Um, what does love mean to you is, is the next part of the book. So I'm going to read a little bit again because, again, this is some stuff I channeled and would love to share with you guys. And you can all find it as well by purchasing the book, Art of Love, via Amazon.com. And you can find it from my website, www.artoflovebyashleydavine.com. Okay. So what does love mean to you? Upon attending an event as a journalist in Los Angeles, I was able to watch the screening of a documentary to be heard. I had a chance to speak to one of the directors of the film afterwards for an interview. He explained to me the number one thing of value to have in this life in order to succeed is literacy. So think about it. 